taken somewhere. Need to find out where. I'd like to look at the corpse before it starts to decompose. Yeah, some of Geralt's hobbies are a little strange, but then again, he is a Witcher, and he returns yet again, this time on the Xbox One X, with a fully fledged and completely intended patch. As long-time viewers of my channel may know, I covered this right back at the launch of the Xbox One X in the completely unpatched version, which delivered 60 FPS for free. A statement which seemed to confuse a great many at the time, which was rather perplexing for myself. What did I mean by that? Well, simple. You take the disc, you play it on your console, you did absolutely nothing at all to get the boost performance, and the developer did absolutely nothing at all to get that boost out of their title. But that's not what we're seeing here. Nope, instead we're seeing two options and it looks like my video may have even gone down at CD Projekt Red and I wouldn't say it instigated them making this patch because that's a very arrogant thing that many other channels pick up on. This developers aren't stupid, they do know what they can achieve on the hardware far better than any of us people analysing things outside of the internal teams. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm sure that the attention my video got may have persuaded them, or more so Microsoft, to fund that project to give us this 1080p and 60 fps bare minimum mode we see here this is the version you can see on screen and it mimics what we saw on the unpatched version but the one that i had only ran at 900p if you patched it at any point you got the later version which means it ran at the scaling version of 1080p which that is what it hit all the time on the xbox one x here we see a resolution that bottoms out at 1080p and pushes up towards a 1440p resolution but don't quote me on those figures i do need to spend far more time this has only been like two hours to analyze and run this through my frame rate analysis this isn't the in-depth analysis i'll be covering with this title and comparing it to other versions including the pc this is just a quick look at the performance mode that many of you will be interested in but briefly we need to look at the 4k mode as well now if you do tap it into the 4k mode this doesn't look like checkerboarding this does look like native 4k but again more work needs to be analyzed from my side to confirm that indefinite but it certainly looks a lot sharper and crisper than we see in the standard performance mode here what we do see as you can see the examples on screen is a much sharper image a lot of the shimmering is gone the texture quality is enhanced and the shadow quality is raised with all the resolution bumps that you see along with the texture filtering now at much higher levels so everything looks very clean and very sharp and this is a very sharp game overall not too heavy in its post processing suite and the biggest benefit which i mentioned in my previous analysis is now that we're seeing this performance mode tapped into the latest versions you get to enjoy these two options in the much superior and improved blood and wine mode in Toussaint which is a beautiful addition to the game and enhances a lot of the details color palettes and the motion blur in the title and this version of the game in this area is specific so you can't play this version of this engine improvement anywhere else in the game so it's the only place you'll see it here and it's a beautiful addition so moving away from the 4K mode for now, which again I will cover in depth later this weekend, we move into the performance mode, which has that base resolution of 1080, but it does scale higher than that. And it does look very sharp and crisp. Certainly coming from the Xbox One version itself, you will notice a difference even in this mode, and you will certainly notice the huge uplift in frame rate performance. It is as good, if not slightly better, than what we saw on the disc version, the unpatched version that I covered before. Like I say, that version does have less access to the hardware. Around 50% of the GPU was available for that version, so you saw the benefit there. This version is running a bare minimum of 44% higher resolution, and as you can see from the like-by-like -like examples in the cutscenes, it is still performing better overall than that version itself, but it still doesn't hit a lock 60 FPS. Now, some of these are GPU sections even here. The scaling resolution in this battle on the river certainly gives you a few dips down to the 454s, but it really feels very smooth, and it's certainly the title, like I said before, that I would play at 60 FPS. The cutscenes are very fluid and smooth, and riding through the open areas looks absolutely excellent and feels much smoother at this new higher frame rate. I am really impressed and pleased that the team put in the extra effort here to deliver the best of both worlds. If you don't like some of these dips that can happen in certain points of the game, and I'll get to those in a moment, then you can just luck it at 30 and get that in massive increase in resolution and clarity and still perform at a pretty much locked 30 FPS, which you can see here. But everyone's going to ask me for two sections. I haven't done the swamps here, but I will be covering those later. But the most important one is the bigger cities and Novigrad. Well, let's head over there right now. Got a bad feeling about this. 
And unsurprisingly, just like before, the game still has CPU limits. And this isn't specifically tied to just the console. You can hit these limits on PC as well at much better CPU rates in these areas. But as you can see here, we're hovering somewhere around the 40s to mid 40s at best, but it can drop to the high 30s. So this is the section where everyone's going to complain. But really, in a game this big, this large, this vast, with this many choices, you spend a very small percentage of your time in the center of Novigrad so overall even including these sections here as a good example from start to finish we're still seeing an average frame rate into the 50s or 51s if you took this out and spent a lot of your time in the open areas battling it spends much more of its time hovering somewhere around the 55s to 60 so it really is a high performing game overall and an absolutely incredible boost to a near three-year-old title that is still delivering the goods and these kind of boosts and benefits. We've already seen the 4K patch mode on the Pro and now we're seeing the 4K mode and improved visual features and the addition of that 1080p 60 mode. As I covered in my pre-patch version, this was certainly an option on the cards and I really did state I hope the team would do it. And here they have, they've delivered something for everybody. So now you can play this game in the best two methods if you want, if you have an Xbox One X. And it's completely free. Just put your disc in, download the latest version on the digital store. However you own this game, or even if you don't, now is a good time as any to rush out and buy it on the cheap and get those additional DLC contents, which are more than worth the money. Because this is an absolutely incredible game, but I think everybody knows that now with the amount of times that I've covered this title, how much I love The Witcher 3, and I think it is incredible for its faults and issues in certain areas. Overall, this game inspired and delivered so much great content, with it inspiring many studios and many AAA studios borrowing from it. Yes, Guerrilla Games are one of those teams that certainly use this title as influence. Anyway, you can see a few more minutes of footage to test for yourself just how good this version runs. And obviously, if you are going to spend all your time in Novigrad, then maybe you can just rub your eyes at 4K and run around at 30 FPS. As always, if you guys and girls enjoyed this, please like, subscribe, and also share where appropriate. Please leave your thoughts and feedback below and follow me on Twitter if you are so inclined. Also, you can support me on Patreon as I completely self-funded and independent. Anyway, you guys and girls take care, and I'll catch you on the next one. We have to help him.